Well, hi, it's me, Rosie O'Donnell. Remember way back when, I think 96, I had a talk show on. I did, and um, that was the first year we started, 96, and this DVD is gonna show you highlights of that first season, season one, and I'm gonna watch it and react to you as I'm watching me, and you could see me watching me talking to you. <laughs> okay, it's the first time I've seen this show in 10 years, probably. You know, it was live, so I never got to watch it. Here we go, we're gonna start right now and I'm gonna hit play. Rafer from Hillsborough, New Jersey, and this is the Rosie O'Donnell Show. Today's guests are George Clooney, Tony Braxton, and Susan Lucci. Hit it, John! The very first show. Yeah, you know where I got the idea? for this open was from Fran Drescher's show, The Nanny. I was watching Fran Drescher's show, The Nanny, and I loved the animation that opened it up, and I called her. She told me she went to this company, and so I called them, and that's how we got this open that's so adorable. I loved it. Thought it was just the right tone. And this is the first show, I was so nervous. So young. How you doing, Michelle? Good. How are you, Rosie? Excellent intro. You're the first of many. Thank you. Were well, you nervous? A little. What do you do for a living, Mish? Um, an accountant. <laughs> you're an accountant? Yeah. Where, and where do you live? I was listening, but it's hard to hear back there. Hillsboro, New Jersey. Nice. New Jersey is the garden state, mm -hmm. and it smells like they fertilize every day. Yeah. <laughs> Can I? It's an old Catskill joke. Yes, my very first guest isn't a doctor, but he plays one on TV. Please welcome my first guest ever, George Clooney! George Clooney came out and did a little Madonna thing. It's so nice to be the first guest. It's a live show. Oh, sure. We can put up whatever we want. You can't leave. I know. I'm here because Madonna couldn't make it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> it is. Stop, George, please! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Um, all right, thanks, Keep sir. Keep screwing around, you're gonna lose the booze. All right, I'm okay. <laughs> you know what? I love that guy. I'm gonna always love that guy for doing that. It's very hard to be the first guest on somebody's new show. You don't know what they're gonna do. You don't know what kind of show it is. And, the star of that magnitude to show up. Pretty impressive. It was very uh, kind of him to do that. And the delightful Susan Lucci, who I love and adore, and I have my whole life, Erica Kane. And you, really nice are you from Long Island originally? I am, yes, I grew up on Long Island. In Garden City. Yes, and you grew up on Long Island too, didn't you? Comac. Jackie Ellard, my next door neighbor, her grandmother, Mary Lanza, lived in Garden City. Oh. And whenever they went to visit their grandma, I'd go with them and we'd look for you because oh. we knew you lived there. I wish we found each other. I know. Great. Did you ever hear people, you were in your house cooking like in 1976 and you heard people screaming, Erica Kane! <laughs> Erica Kane! It was me and Jackie. Yeah, it was. I think she was the guest on most often as we got through six seasons. And, and she actually was nearby, you know, shot in New York. So if we needed somebody at the last minute or if somebody ever canceled, she would always say yes and always show up and always deliver. I love Susan Lucci. Love her. <laughs> okay, wait, I want to take one for me because no one will believe I had you on my first show. Case would cancel. You too, right? Oh, all right, let me try to be yes, in it too. Wait, here. Yeah. This will be nice chin Hi. shot. All right, Sam, yeah, that's good. So that's the first show. I remember it well. Yeah, that's wild. I was nervous. I remember that. Rosie has a baby. She's a fabulous mom. She can sing all the theme songs from every sitcom. <laughs> Got two chihuahuas. Ever been to Okinawa? <laughs> <laughs> Got her own TV talk show. Way to go, Rosie. Oh, go, go, go. <laughs> Lily Tomlin, one of those people still hard for me to believe I know her. 
Hi, I'm Michelle Grafer from Hillsboro, New Jersey, and this is Rosie O'Donnell's 100th show. Michelle, the woman who did her first announce, she also did the 100th show. Sweet. How have things changed for you since our first show? My phone's been ringing a lot. Yeah, do people yeah. recognize you? A lot of people. Yeah, so this is that's funny. Girl. You know, they, they didn't want me to have an uh, audience member open the show. He said, there's no way an audience member can do that. It's too much pressure, it's live TV. And I said, no, I insist. Really? Yeah. Your famous sister friend. What can I tell you? <laughs> Thanks to you. Michelle, ladies and gentlemen. So then we did it and it became one of the highlights of the show for me. Cause I got to talk to a real person and, and have a moment of reality before you go into Celebrityville. <laughs> You know who told me to make a big deal out of the 100th show? Luther Vandross. Oh, we made it! Yep, Luther Vandross came over to me and said, you know, what are you doing for your 100th show? And I was like, I have no idea. He goes, you should make it black tie and tails. It's our 100th show, you know? I mean, come on. I don't know why people are making such a big deal out of it or anything, our 100th show. I mean, <laughs> it's ridiculous, you know? It's really just our 100th show. Marlo Thomas, who I adore. Look at him! I like the opening. If, if I only had high heels, I could run and fly it like you did in the... Oh, Marlo Thomas, thank you. Sit down. Well, I try to think of a present that you wouldn't have that nobody else would give you but oh, me. Oh, I don't have that. Nobody's given me a kite. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. How are you? I'm great. It's thanks. so great to have you here. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here. I've been watching you. We love you. Thanks. This I mean, is Phil's old studio. I know. I know. had good luck from being yeah, in Phil's old that's studio. Great. We that's got great. all the positive vibes yeah, from good. him. Good. Uh, the first. Here's the lovely Barbara Walters. Always showed up when we needed her. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Rosie. How are you? I'm okay, but I'm gonna have to say something. What? Look how thin she is. Yeah. What she? Fantastic. Look, I, my body is like three times the width of her body. <laughs> it's like a toothpick next to a Duraflame. Kind of. Yes. What she just didn't happen to mention is that one of our 10 most fascinating people is... Oh, it's when I was a fascinating person. Is this not Rosie O'Donnell's year? Well, you know, I have no complaints. We have uh, the guy, the man, the reason that I'm doing this show. If imitation is truly the sincerest form of flattery, then our first guest should be really, really flattered because I've set out to do a show exactly like his. Please welcome a true TV legend, uh, Mr. Mike Douglas. So do you have any advice to give me? Any, any tips, any My advice, you need, you need very little advice. <laughs> Sometimes when people recognize you, they get confused. I remember one time, a woman turned to me and she said, you're Merv Griffin, aren't you? <laughs> and I said, no ma'am, I'm not. And she said, yes you are. <laughs> Sorry, so sir. many hours of memories I have confused. watching his show with my grandmother and him and Toady Fields and all those guests he had. It was uh, fantastic to get to meet the people that I grew up watching. So it was one of the best parts of having that show is to get to meet the ones who inspired me to make a show. Let's see what this is. We have uh, the guy, the man, the reason that I'm doing this show. Merv Griffin it's is Merv. here. Merv is here. I cannot yeah. wait. Hey. I'm Adorable. He was just the greatest and so kind. And he invited me on his yacht many times. He had a big yacht. I never went. I've never been on a big yacht like that. When I was a kid, I have to tell you, I would come home from school. My Nana would make a big bowl of popcorn. We would sit and watch you every single day. It was my father. It was your dad? Yes. Yeah, oh, because oh, you look the same. You do. You look the same. <laughs> that was me. Yeah, that was. Thank those were great times. Oh, the best. It was a show you could watch with your grandma and your kids, and everybody yeah, enjoyed it. It was fun. Favorite guests among Favorite them? Favorite guests. Well, there were some. See, like you, there are some people born for talk shows. Yeah. You're born for talk show. You well, Irish? I enjoy it. I'm Irish. Merv and Mike, I was lucky to get to meet both of them. And really, when I started to do my talk show, people said, what are you gonna do, Jerry Springer? You know, everybody was beating each other up at that time. You know, Jenny Jones' show had had a murder happen and Geraldo got punched in the nose, you know? And I said, no, I'm not doing any of that. I'm doing Merv Griffin and Mike Douglas. And we did Merv Griffin. There you go. And it was a thrill to get to know him, actually, it really was. So great to have you here. It really oh, is. I, I love, Rosie, I just love you. And I watched that show. And it's perfect. I mean, you arrived at the right time, you stuck your neck out. Yeah. We talked about that one time in Atlantic City. I mean, that's a lot of 
chances to take doing a show, they all said, oh, you can't bring entertainment back. Yeah, I was working. Entertainment should not be on television. That's true. When I was working at, at Merv's uh, hotel, and I said to him, what do you think? If I do, try to do your show for the 90s. And yep. you're the one who told me to do it. I know, and I'm here to collect the royalties today. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? You ever, you ever get out of control? Do you know what's funny? Is I'm so much higher than the guests. If I was on now, I would be angry that my, I, my body is not level. The chairs are not level. Just thought I'd bring that up. We're going to sing a little Irish? What do you got? Sure. Uh, do you know, uh, over in Kilhani, many years ago. That's too do you know it? I know the chorus. My mother sang a song to me with words so sweet and low. It's a simple little ditty in her good old Irish way. And I'd give the world if she could sing that song to me this day. Now here's Rosie. Tora, Laura, Laura. Too high? I don't know. Tora. Is it, it's too high, too wrong? high, too high. Is it's it too wrong high. for me? Or you? Too oh, look how you can change the, he just did the whole thing and changed the key. Tora, you know how long it takes John McDee to do that? About three weeks. Tora, Laura, Laura. Hush, now don't you cry. Played it all night long. Tora, Laura, Laura. Tora, Laura, Laura. That's a beautiful... Give me that again. Lie. Lie. Gorgeous. Is it good? Gorgeous. Did you like that? Yes. That's an Irish They were very formative for me in my idea of who I was or could be as a person. Mary she, Tyler Moore is in the she's house! Here. I can't believe it. I'm so excited. I really love her. I'm a little worried, John, I might frighten her. Really? Now, I know I've said this about people, but this is an actual <laughs> book that I made, okay? See this composition book? Starting when Mary Tyler Moore went on the air. I don't know how scary it is. I frightened the staff when they saw this. Can you get close on this? This is my actual notes that I used to take. Look at that. During the Mary Tyler Moore episodes. Look, it's page after page after page after page of Mary Tyler Moore trivia. And some of I them showed I her the book. I would quiz and boy, did she days, laugh. Look what I have. Oh my God. I have oh, a little. Rosie. This is my little handwriting writing from seventh and eighth grade. Oh, geez. And uh, this is all the, like, name the blonde waitress who works in the coffee shop downstairs. Oh, that's my best friend. What's her name? Her real name? On the show. On the show. Um, <laughs> just a minute. It was like Blanche or. Kind of starts with an R. Uh, Rosie! No, no. It's with an E. Ends with an E. Has a T in it. Re black. <laughs> Look, Rayette. Rayette! Remember, yes, yes Rayette. Played by Beverly Sanders. And played brilliantly. She was. She was yes. great on that. These questions, do they scare you? Do you know that there were people like me sitting around America taking notes? <laughs> do you have any idea? I think you're the only one, Rosie. You do? <laughs> yeah. do you she laughed, so and she thought it was yeah. crazy. Oh, right. But she signed it. She wrote, I love this book, and I love you. And I still have it. She's back in the yep. house. Oh, I yes. have to admit, I was a little frightened. I didn't know if she would return. Yeah? <laughs> I thought I saw fear in her eyes the first time she was here. I worried, yeah. you know. But I just, I love her so much, it's hard to even articulate. You uh, get to L.A. a lot? I do. My dad lives there, and oh, I yeah. have a few friends, and uh, I get back quite often. How about Valerie? Does she live out there? Not yes. Is she? No, no, no. She's living in New York now. She lives in New York? She was, Are you guys um... friendly still? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you see, I love her too, Rhoda. Uh, you know, uh, and then we had Valerie come out. Demeanor. You have the sound. Yeah. The yes. sound of Rhoda. Sound Let's just think if we can Rhoda. all try to conjure up the sound of Rhoda. <laughs> I don't know if we can. Mm. No, I'm now, this the, it was a stall. I was trying to get her to come. Well. Rhoda? Rhoda? Oh. Hey, with, yeah. oh that's yeah. what I thought yeah. would happen! Yeah. It was a surprise. Now, come on. Valerie Harper and Mary Tyler Moore on the same stage? Does it get better than that? Come on. 
I don't even know how to explain how that feels. I feel like I'm just in my house and this is my dream come true. <laughs> my entire life. Should we call oh, you Brenda? Brenda Faye! Oh, Brenda yes. Faye, Faye, just like you, Arona she, Faye. Last time I was here, she remembered the middle names. And yeah. I had to grinch around in my memory. Oh. Like, Give me a question, I got it. You can't stop oh, me. Oh, yes, that's right. I got some what questions. What, you, you brought questions? Yes, I oh, sure well, did. Oh, well, in that case. Okay. Um, okay, why did Rhoda have to stay at Mary's apartment for a couple of days? Because there was a fire. <gasps> she had to get a picture. Oh, no! <laughs> you can't stop me. Okay. You honestly can't Rhoda, stop me. No, no, this one was very early on. You can't stop Rhoda me. Rhoda went to the zoo and yes. was fined $40 for feeding a buffalo. What did she feed? Yogurt. Ah, on Yogurt. The class, because that buffalo's gonna have a nice figure. Oh, yeah, you <laughs> see? I love you both. I do. I don't know. I do. It's, uh, it's too much for me. Divine. They were pivotal in my childhood, the two of them. And uh, friendships and how to women supporting each other and her being single and not having to have a husband. And it just, you know what? It was a wonderfully empowering show for all women. And it was very formative for me and my idea of who I was or could be as a person. And, you know, the fact that I know the both of them still shocks me. Okay, this is my oh. scrapbook. Bette and here's Midler my tickets? Bette Midler scrapbook. And here's my picture of Bette Midler. And look, I signed it. I wrote, best wishes, Bette Midler, and it was me. And you did it. I signed it myself. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm like crazy like that. She's the creme de la creme. She's the divine mistake. It's the Romeo Donald Show. Unbelievable. I can't even. I know, I can't talk about it's it either. Like, I'm, I, I, I hope I'm able to get through the whole show. I understand, completely. She's here, the queen of all things. I know. Bette Midler is in the house. I know, it's wild. It's wild. You know, I have to say that I've practiced this introduction in my bedroom since I was eight years old. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, our first guest is quite simply the queen of all things. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Emmy winning, Grammy winning, Tony winning, Golden Globe winning, Oscar nominated, Her Highness Royalty, <laughs> Bette Midler. <laughs> She is the divine Miss M. What an <laughs> intro. That's the best intro I've ever had in my whole life. Well, that's you should fabulous. have that every time you wake up Thank in the morning. <laughs> Thank you. Now, do you think I'm nuts? Because you know, I think you're probably the most insane person I've ever met in my whole <laughs> life. I can't believe it. You, ha you know more about me than I know myself. I know. But by this point, Bet and I were already friendly. We had oh, some I'm friends sure. in common and had met way before this show. But I remember the first time I met her, I was in a limousine going to the wedding of one of her former backup singers, Charlo, and the guy's house we were at, Mark Shame and her composer and friend, oh, my friend too, said, uh, we gotta get ready, Bet's on her way over. And I was like, Bet who? And he's like, Bet Midler. And I thought, oh dear God, I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. But I did, and she's been kind and sweet and loving to me ever since. I don't watch TV at all. Rosie, I'm sorry. I'm gonna start to watch TV. I had to send you a tape of this show yes, to show I, you what I was. But I was very excited for you. I was very excited that you were having all this success. This is a real thrill. Oh, well, a real thank. thrill. It's because of you that it I'm is. in this business. God bless you, It's girl. the truth. See, look what I've done. But look what you've done. You created me. <laughs> Would you sing for us when we come back? Would you? Please. You will sing. I will sing if. Yes. If I'm joined by Rosie O'Donnell. To sing with you? Yes, will you sing with me? Oh, my oh, Lord. Oh, come on, I know you've been waiting since you were eight. Oh. Come on. Well, all right, I will. <laughs> yeah, Bette Midler. I like when they let me sing with them. Not everyone would, but right, Bette so would. Do? Let's do Twisted. Let's do my analyst told me. Hit twisted. It. Condensed. Condensed. Go ahead. Why are you saying condensed? <laughs> well, so what? Yeah, we got time. I it's my show. Say it. My analyst told me. That I was right out of my head The way he described it He said you'd be better off dead than alive I didn't listen to his jive I knew all along he was all wrong And I knew that he thought I was crazy But you know I'm not, oh no Me, that I was right out of my head That I would need treatment But I'm not that easily led He said I was the type that was most inclined One out of his sight to be right out of my mind And he thought it was nuts No more Around the oh, oh no. no. Did I do it? Yeah. yeah. They say as a child I appeared a little bit wild with all my crazy ideas. But I knew what was happening. I knew I was a genius. What's so strange when you know that you're a wizard at three? I said, baby, this is meant to be, 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 be. They say little children were supposed to sleep tight. That's why I drank a fifth of vodka one night.
night. My parents got frantic, didn't know what to do. But I saw some crazy things before I came to now. Do you think I was crazy? No. I may have been only three, but I was swinging. They all have today, Grand Bell. They all laughed at Edison and also at Einstein. So why should I feel sorry if they just didn't understand the reasoning and the logic that went on in my head? I think it was a so which just had them laugh at me when I refused to ride on all those double decker buses because there was no driver around the top. That I was right out of my head, but I said, Doctor, I think that it's you instead, cause I have got a thing so unique and new. It proves that I got the last laugh on you, cause instead of one head, ooh, I got two. And you know, two heads are better than one. You win. Do it on your own. Ben Fiddler, ladies and gentlemen. This was interesting. We had a lot of people telling me they look like me because I'm the average sized woman in America. I look more like your neighbor than I do like a celebrity. And that's part of the appeal. So um, people started sending in pictures. We got something I wanted to show you. She says, please show my picture on TV. Susie Caputo. <laughs> she looks a little bit like me, don't yeah. you think? Susie, I think this yeah. one cracked me up. Here's Allison Anders' grandmother. Look at this. <laughs> Allison Anderson, I think you might be a winner. Look at this guy. How funny is this? This is actually a man. Hey, listen, if you're a guy, you want to get dressed up and say you look like me, send the photo, come on down. Absolutely. What do I care? <laughs> and this one cracked me up. Kevin Free. <laughs> so we decided to have a look-alike show. It was my idea. And the funny thing with the people who showed up, Oh, and there they are, all the people that look like me. You won't believe your eyes, tons of roses in disguise. It's the Rosie O'Donnell Show. All these dark-haired, chubby women. It was like everyone, everyone knew someone like me, who looked like me or was like me. <laughs> this is kind of creepy. Yeah. <laughs> One of the women in the audience said it's like an Irish wake. And it is. <laughs> hi, darling, how are you? Oh, hi! How are you, Rosie? I'm so 